Hello, this is Paul Milligan for IT Show TV at IT 2017. Welcome to our panel discussion. Today's topic is um, why should the AV industry care about IoT? I'm joined today by uh, Mike Bruman from Vanti Integrator Group, and I'm also joined by Jason Lapthorne from Harman. Hi. Um, gentlemen, uh, starting with you, why should the AV industry care about IoT, Mike? Um, I think the AV industry is already IoT, to be quite honest. Um, you know, we are producing black boxes and pings, we're plugging them into the network, and ultimately we can be sending that data out to the internet. So, for me, I don't think this is a kind of huge leap into something brand new. I think it's, we're actually already kind of forging ahead in this new kind of hyped up industry. And we should just be doing more of what we're doing and tying it more into software solutions and platforms. Sure. I mean, Jason, I've seen big proclamations from your CEO about the, the relationship between Harman and, and IoT. So it's obviously a, a, a major thing for you guys. Yeah, absolutely. We've been looking to produce this, and I've, I've got to agree with Mike as well. You know, I don't think it's it's the future. I think it's the now. It's the present. Most definitely. Yeah. And almost every product that we're developing now is concerned about the internet of things. It is connected, it, is, it can talk to multiple devices. Yeah. And we've got to make that as seamless as we can for the, for the end user. Sure. I know speaking to a couple of the attendees at the Smart Builders Conference, there was some disappointment, maybe a little bit of frustration that it maybe wasn't going as fast as they wanted. It, it, do you see that, Mike? Do you feel any of that? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think the, the thing with smart building is it's, um, it's fragmented, it's a complex kind of integration landscape. You've got um, lots of different products at lots of different levels, all the way from kind of physical security like access control, CCTV, all the way through to stuff that you know, we're very used to around video conferencing and unified comms. Yeah. So I think actually, um, and we had our whole leadership team out here yesterday looking at kind of future of smart building and how we're looking at it as part of our strategy. But I think there was a lot of talk on the hypothetical kind of what could happen and some ideas around you know, what could possibly be and the utopian vision of smart and yeah. how some of the products that were presented feed into that. But there wasn't a lot on the how we actually go about doing it. And that's something that we're working quite hard on at the moment in terms of looking at our previous experience with the 240 Blackfires project for UBM and working that into more of an approach to how do we actually deploy a smart building from scratch for clients. I mean, having that type of case study project that was covered in our front cover actually in our magazine, having that kind of project, does that help you enormously in terms of going to new clients and saying, this is what we're capable of, but also what the technology is capable of? Yeah, I think... Um, do you need that kind of case study? Do you need that proven... Well, I think the industry needs it. So yeah. with any new, um, any new product or technology or way of going about stuff, you need to have the metrics that support the outcomes that you're, you're trying to sell at the end of the day. And so, you know, we are starting to see some really good statistics coming out of UBM in terms of, you know, desk utilization has reached 85% compared to 40% in their old building. So, you know, we're producing tangible results for them and they've managed to sublet floors now because they've got the data that allows them to pressurize their space further. So in terms of their 15 year payback for deploying all this technology, that's now down to about three, um, which is a, you know, is a great result. But it's not until we've got that sort of, uh, again, going back to the IoT thing, you know, being able to pull that data out of those platforms and be able to talk about it in a, a meaningful, you know, humanistic type way and in terms of business outcomes, that's the only thing that's really going to enable the journey towards it. Going around and talking about, you know, the devices that plug on to things are you know, important, they make up the overall solution, but um, ultimately, as with all technology, it's a tool to get stuff done. It's yeah. not a means to an end itself. Well, it's the means to an end, it's not the end itself. So yeah. it's, you know, what are the outcomes we want? How do those buildings need to function? And how can IoT play a role in that? Not the other way around? Sure. I, think Jason, the smart, you, sorry, yeah. I think the smart building one's an interesting one because I think everyone has a different idea. Is it that the lights turn off after you leave a room? Is it to make sure all your rooms are booked uh, for each time? Is it, is it saving power and data on desks on a Friday afternoon when there's not many people in? And I think it's, it's everyone has a slightly different So it's not take clearly identifiable? No, I don't think so. Okay. Do you find yourself as a company being proactive about IoT and smart buildings or, or reactive because clients are coming to you? I think we're definitely, I think it's a bit of both to be honest. We're definitely pushing that. 
uh, we're looking to get smarter and smarter and what we're doing in the home and the car as well is, is, is coming into the business world as well. We're looking to get smarter, we're looking to integrate into a number of different devices and control them all centrally. Yeah. Um, but also we are getting pushback from um, our end users sure. who are using this on a daily basis that want to have a central source of data to see exactly how their building is being used um, so they can yeah. make better informed decisions going forward. Are they using all their desk spaces? Are they using small huddle rooms or are they using large conference boardroom type scenarios? How do you make better decisions going forward if you haven't got the data to start with? Yeah, I mean it sounds like Vanti are pretty far down this line. Jason, without obviously speaking about these guys, how do you find the rest of the sort of integration and consultant community with regards to IT? Are they, do they get it? Are they embracing it? Or is there again a bit of slow to react? I think, thing, I think there's been a little bit slow to react in the market in general. Uh, I think that sort of comes down to sort of um, when we talk about putting things onto the network, yeah. Network AV, it has been a little bit slow to react. I mean, we've had Network AV products for the last sort of five or six years, but they're really only coming to fruition now. Yeah. Um, so I think there has been a little bit slow to adapt and it's a little bit new for uh, people yeah. out there. But they are coming around now. Do you, do you need that hard data that Mike was talking about at UBM? Do you need that hard data really to maybe convince Yeah, more I mean, having to... hard data is invaluable. Yeah. Showing a customer, look, you can save X amount of money by deploying this, this software, these hardware principles, um, is a huge selling technique, yeah. a hugely powerful tool. So yes, I think, I think you need that hard data to start off with. Yeah. Um, it's quite hard to generate. You do need examples like the UBM case study, yeah. where you have clear facts and figures of how it's being used, how much money they have saved. Um, so yeah, you can use that going forward. Do you think the adoption differs around the world or is there a kind of pockets that are quicker or slower maybe than, than others? Have you kind of noticed any kind of changes or? No, I think, I mean, more generally, the states seem to have uh, been looking at kind of building automation, that kind of thing for a bit longer. But I'd say in terms of kind of finding case studies and that kind of thing, it's not, read, it doesn't seem to be readily available. Yeah. yeah. And I think a lot of it is sort of big capital cities where ground rent is an absolute yeah. premium. Yeah. How much can they save space? Do they need all this office space? Do they need 20 meeting rooms? Well, actually 15 will do if they have a good booking system. Yeah. So I think we're finding that particularly in places like London, where, as I said, the rent is particularly quite high. Yeah. Um, so how can they better use their facilities, sure. their rooms, their building to ultimately cut down on that? Well, it sounds payments. like because you're connecting all these things together, you, there, there is actually a lot of data and you can prove usage, electricity, you know, all that. So that actually, it seems like that's the benefit right there, isn't it? That you can yeah. prove all these things. I think it is. I think the, the quick wins around energy and, you know, all of that stuff's really quantifiable. You can, you know, easily meter how much energy you're saving and stuff like, you know, UBM, their floors are roughly 25 to 33 percent more efficient than other floors in the same building, yeah. which is a great outcome. But actually, if you enable spaces for productivity first, then you're actually into more of the intangibles in terms of, well, how do you measure productivity? Yeah. And also, how do you measure well-being? And there's some people out there like Delos who are putting standards together around that. Um, but it's it, you start moving into a world where uh, the ratio of impact is actually, you want your people to be happy and people are, are looking at using building now as kind of talent attraction retention tools. So it's not just about, you know, can we switch the lights off and save some energy? It's important, yeah. but you can get all of that saving anyway if you're focused on the people out there. Again, I think that comes back to what I was talking about earlier with the smart building. Everyone has different views around it, and for most people, that's saving energy. Having a smart yeah. building, oh, it saves you energy. Or actually, it's the intangible benefits that you get from productivity, from employee satisfaction. I mean, is there a way we could clear up that? I mean, part of that maybe the media's job. Is there part of that? We could clear up that kind of confusion, get a more clear, defined issue of what IoT and, and smart buildings are. Is there a way to do that? Could that come from manufacturers maybe? I don't know. Yeah. Uh, possibly. I think it is a little bit fractured and everyone yeah. has this def different slant on it. So it's, it's, it's not a one size fits all. Everyone has all sorts of different buildings and floor space and meeting rooms. So it is quite hard to sort of come yeah. at it as a one solution kind of thing. But yeah, we're certainly looking at products to come out with that that will enable people to become more powerful, particularly around the smart building. And when we talk about it right now, are we talking about merely the corporate market or are we talking, looking at retail or education or government? I mean, or? It's almost every building, yeah. really. Uh, even into the home now. Yeah. You know, you tell someone you can save yeah. money at home, they're going to be interested. It, it, so I think for every market. I mean, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to, to walk around the show. I mean, are you, if you have, have you seen any or lots of IoT-related things or 
are you expecting to see many or if not is that an, is that an indication that maybe it isn't catching on as quick as we want have you Jason, have you had a chance to uh, unfortunately I, I haven't yet uh, hopefully over the next uh, next week or so you know this week I mean, are, you, are you expect if not if you're you expecting to see a lot of mentions on the stands or products I think are... there's going to be a lot of mentions about it yeah but probably not with any substance behind it okay it's supposed to be right how does that integrate how do you link into other manufacturers how do we control it how do we make a one solution yeah. approach for it I think that's the difficult aspect a lot of people are promoting this IOT and yeah. these benefits but the substance behind it I think is, is lacking at the moment yeah I think it's I mean it's a bit like Michael Jackson Neverland right you kind of build this huge theme park but actually there's only one person who's over there yeah. and so you've got all these people building all this stuff there's a lot of product out there that's almost looking to be the solution to yeah. something and people aren't quite sure yeah. what having just had a kind of look around the show I'm not seeing anyone I don't think we're quite at the kind of 4k uh, yeah. show where everything had a sticker on it yeah. saying it was you know 4k ready or enabled or whatever I don't think people are kind of picking up IOT in that way but I think uh, you know I think there is now an overwhelming appreciation and you know Harman are, are way ahead on this as well in terms of it is bringing AV onto the IT network and actually as part of that integration it then leads into you know IOT I think yeah. the term itself is very overhyped at the moment I think yeah. and also you know you can see huge investments being made into companies that still aren't really sure you know what impact they're having or um, sometimes even what their product is. Sure. So I think, um, you know, I don't think we'll see the AV industry suddenly become, you know, IoT enabled. But I think, you know, we're, as Jason's already said, you know, we're already there. We yeah. already are the Internet of yeah. Things. Yeah. And I think a lot of it, you know, the manufacturers need to work together alongside the system in integrators as well to put all these systems in place yeah. and to make sure every device can communicate with another. Absolutely. Well, that's a great message to end on. So yeah. thank you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.